Numbers, Numbers chapter 16. Do we have anyone who remembered a verse from last week? I think I gave it in passing, if I'm correct. Did I give you Hebrews 4.3? Yeah, okay. I actually didn't write it down, so. Hebrews 4.3. Hebrews 4.3. Very good. All right. Anybody want to say that? Uh, that verse for us. Ross would like to say Hebrews 4.3. Well, the, the whole verse is what we're looking for. The reference almost anyone can get. I can give you any reference. Psalm 150.12. Right? Nobody got that. Nobody got that. All right. Yeah, no, I was dealing with the Psalm 150.12 thing still. Nobody wanted to call me out on it. But okay. Uh, Hebrews 4.3, does someone want to say that? Yeah, Any? yeah? go ahead. Good. Anyone else? Yes, go ahead. Very good. Anyone else want to say Hebrews 4 3? See? No, he doesn't want to say, he just wanted to correct the fact that there is no Psalm 150.12, but I knew there, there wasn't one because that's why I said it. All right, Numbers chapter 16, if we're going to continue on, we'll go over here to this chapter, Numbers chapter 16. Numbers chapter 16. Now it's a long passage. We'll go ahead and read it and then we'll have uh, some comments on the passage. Numbers chapter 16. Now Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Datham and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and on the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron, and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them, Wherefore, then, lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face, and he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who is holy, and will cause him to come near unto him. Even him whom he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him. This do take you censers, Korah, and all his company, and put fire therein, and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord doth choose, he shall be holy. Ye take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. And Moses said unto Korah, Hear, I pray you, ye sons of Levi. Seemeth it but a small thing unto you that the God of Israel hath separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them? And he hath brought thee near to him and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee, and seek ye the priesthood also? For which cause both you and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord." And what is Aaron that ye murmur against him? And Moses sent to call Datham and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, which should, said, We will not come up. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of the land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us? Moreover, 
Though thou hast brought, not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey, or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards, wilt thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. And Moses was very wroth and said unto the Lord, Respect not thou their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. And Moses said unto Korah, Be, be thou and all thy company before the Lord, thou and they and Aaron tomorrow. And take every man his censer, and put incense in them, and bring ye before the Lord every man his censer, two hundred and fifty censers, thou also and Aaron each of you his censer. And they took every man his censer and put fire in them and laid incense thereon and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from the tabernacle of Korah, Datham, and Abiram. And Moses rose up and went unto Datham and Abiram. And the elders of Israel followed him, and he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Datham, and Abiram, and on every side. And Datham and Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tents, and their wives, and their sons, and their children. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of mine own hand. If these men die the common death of all men, and if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up with all that appertaineth unto them, and they go down quickly into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord." And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses, and all the men that appertaineth unto Korah, and all their goods. They, and all that appertained to them, went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them, for they said, Lest the earth swallow us up also. And there came out a fire from the Lord and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Eleazar, the, sons, the son of Aaron, the priest, and that he take up the censers out of the burning, and scatter thou the fire yonder, for they are hallowed. The censers of these sinners against their, their own souls, let them make them broad plates for a covering of the altar, for they offered them before the Lord, therefore they are hallowed, and they shall be a sign unto the children of Israel. And Eleazar the priest took the brazen censers, which were uh, brazen censers wherewith that they that were made were burnt. <laughs> I'll say that, start again because I'm tongue-tied there. And Eleazar the priest took the brazen censers wherewith they that were burnt had offered, and they were made broad plates for a covering of the altar to be a memorial unto the children of Israel that no stranger which is not of the seed of Aaron come near to offer incense before the Lord that he be not as Korah and as his company as the Lord said to him by the hand of Moses. But on the morrow all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron saying ye have killed the people of the Lord. And it came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation, and behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared, and Moses and Aaron <clears throat> and Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Get you up from among this congregation, that I may consume them, as in a moment. And they fell upon their faces, and Moses and Aaron, and Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer, and put fire therein from off the altar, and put an incense. 
put on incense and go quickly into the congregation and make an atonement for them. For there is wrath gone out from the Lord, the plague is begun. And Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun among the people. And he put on incense and he made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living and the plague was stayed. And they that died in the plague were 14,700 besides them that died about the matter of Korah. And Aaron returned unto Moses unto the door of the tabernacle of a congregation, and the plague was stayed. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that we can receive from you some understanding and instruction, especially as we go forward in our day. We're thankful that you have given us the scriptures to study and understand. And as we do take some time to go through this passage, Lord, we pray that you just help us to receive from you what we need and help our understanding that we might be able to be uh, what you want us to be, to be like Christ and to be uh, formed in his image and made in his likeness and to be uh, used of you as we go forward in this day that we have, Lord. And as we receive these lessons, Lord, we ask for your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we have an interesting passage here, and these men are... Uh, Korah is named specifically several times. These are men that are not uh, insignificant. They're men that are famous in the congregation, as it says in verse number two, men of renown. So these are men who held position of authority. They, had, uh, they hold rank. They can, they can make things happen. And with, that, with rank and with privilege comes responsibility. We're told that we're supposed to uh, heed the counsel of the Lord and follow those things, and they've been given Moses and Aaron to teach and instruct them. These guys then decided that they were, they were the ones who should be running and being called of God. They, they should be the, the holy ones, and they figured that they had just as much power and strength and opportunity as Moses did. So they stood up and they murmured against Moses, and they got this congregation of 250 men to go in opposition, and they're speaking against, against the Lord, and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron, and uh, they lifted up their, con uh, sorry, verse number three, and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron, and said unto them, ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore, lift, then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. Now, who came down to Egypt to get the children of Israel out? Moses. So why do they all of a sudden think now he is lifting himself up and being this great person? They were stuck in bondage and they did nothing about it. These men were there. They were in bondage too. So if Moses is not used the call of God and it's not a, somebody special, then why didn't they do something before that? You have these things happening and then we have he's gotten himself some other men. Uh, verse... Oh, so <clears throat> go to verse 12 through 14. And Moses sent to call Datham and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, which said... We will not come up. So he's calling them out to say, hey, come out. We're going to deal with this situation. We're not going to come out. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of the land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness? So uh, who brought them up out of the land? Moses brought them up out of the land, and he brought them to the land, and then he offered to go in and help them take the land, right? We just talked about it last week. He sent the spies in. And then most of the congregation believed the guys that said, oh, we can't do this. And so Moses told them, well, God said you can't go in now. Was it Moses that kept them from the land? It was God that kept them from the land because of their own uh, lack of faith in God. They had no faith to go into the land at the time. And so it wasn't Moses that kept them from the land. <laughs> Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey, or given us inheritance of the fields and vineyards. Wilt thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. So they're, they're really pushing back against, uh, against Moses. 
and they're trying to uh, trying to become the the Lord's anointed instead of Moses. It's not a good thing to be talking against God's man. It's not a good thing to be talking against authority, as we'll see as we go through these verses. God put the authority in place that is over us, no matter what we're talking about, whether it's church or whether it's uh, government, God allows those to be in authority. We don't always have to agree with what they say, uh, but we have a man here who has uh, taken on opportunity to speak against, against God. The problem with that is that he's, he's not right himself. He's ungodly. Proverbs 16.27 says, An ungodly man diggeth up evil, and in his lips there is a burning fire. Uh, chapter 15, verse 1. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. We have all these things that give us direction and help today. In that day, Korah was standing against God's man, trying to be instead of God. The backbiting and bickering and evil speaking about God's man is what destroys churches these days. Amen. It becomes one of those things that we see as not really a, a sin. But in verse... clearly calls it the sin, uh, and I've lost it because I haven't marked it. Verse, uh, enjoining in their sin. Ah, right there. Verse 26, and all the congregate, and he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. So this is a, a very grievous thing because it undermines the authority that God has put in place. When God puts a pastor in a church, he's, God has put the pastor in the church. Uh, a lot of people think that they have to, uh, and, and uh, I guess a lot of religions operate this way, they decide who's going to be there by a vote. Well, we, we, we think we like what you say. It's almost a political reign, as it were. And uh, we as independent Baptists don't always operate as we should as far as the Bible goes, but we do operate a lot closer to what should be happening where we let the pastor have the authority that he's supposed to have. Now, most people will get out of sorts and uh, people come and go in the church. Why? Because they don't agree with the pastor. And in this day and age, it's, it's rampant. and People just think that they can have their own authority, their own understanding. But God put a pastor in place. And, and maybe you don't agree with everything that the pastor says, but if the pastor is preaching the truth of the Word of God and, and following God and doing what God says, maybe you need to examine some of the things that you're thinking or you're believing or your purpose and goal, because God has his man, and he wants to continue to be uh, dealing with people, and we're not supposed to speak evil of those that God has put into authority. Uh, Acts chapter, I believe it's 23. Nope, uh, yeah. Paul is addressing the council here in verse number one. And Paul, earnestly beholding the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God unto this day. And the high priest Ananias commanded them that stood by him to smite him on the mouth. Then said Paul unto him, God shall smite thee, thou whited wall, for sittest thou to judge me after the law, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law? And they that stood by said, Revilest thou God's high priest? Then said Paul, I wist not, brethren, that he was the high priest, for it is written, Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. Paul was 
not, uh, he's being accused in, uh, unjustly, as it were, and he said, we're not supposed to speak evil of the ruler. So when you're standing with God, you have nothing to fear. But when you stand against God, <laughs> you have everything to fear. Uh, 1 Timothy 5, 13 says, And withal they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattlers also, and busybodies, speaking things which ought not. These are people who have uh, taken on uh, maybe not enough work and are sitting there thinking that they're better than the pastor, better than the preacher, and so they get involved in conversations and, and they get involved in things that they should not be doing and they start talking against the, the ruler that God has put in place. And this all spouts from pride. Um, envy, envy of that ruler, that, that lo- that, uh, envy of that uh, position that they hold as a pastor, envy of the, uh, the work that's being done through them. Proverbs 14.30 says, A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy is the rottenness of of the bones. All through Proverbs we have these uh, wise sayings that help us to guide and direct our walk if we would heed to them. Wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous, but who is able to stand before envy? Raw. Proverbs uh, 27 verse uh, 4. Song of Solomon 8.6 says, set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm, for love is strong, uh, for love is strong as death, jealousy is cruel as the grave, and the coals thereof are coals of fire, which hath a most vehement, vehement flame. Jealousy, envy, we are uh, driven by it in our life, and pride, we know that pride uh, goeth before destruction and haughty spirit before fall, but we have pride that is welled up in Korah, and he has decided that he is better than Moses. Um, Psalm chapter 101, Psalm 101 Verse number five says, Whoso privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hath an high look and a proud heart will not I suffer. We have Korah who has really brought slander against Moses and Aaron, saying that they're not the only ones that are holy, they're not, not the only ones that are righteous, that the whole congregation is. Now, we know that previously Moses had looked out several men that would be able to stand and help him. Uh, there were 70 that were, were spoken about in the previous lesson. And now there's 250 who think that they have more power than Moses or have more right to what's going on in Moses. So that's just pride welling up inside them. The book of Proverbs speaks a lot about pride, many times. Proverbs chapter 13. <clears throat> Proverbs 13, verse 10, Only by pride cometh contention, but with the well-advised is wisdom. So when we have something to say against our, our authority, it's pride in us. Now, we have to understand that not all authority is perfect. Only God is perfect. So you might be right in thinking that they're wrong about something, but you have no right to speak against them because you're not in their position. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know the decisions that they're making. And you don't know why they have decided what they've decided. They've done that because that's their position. And you know what? If they're wrong, let God deal with it. 
Now, we uh, operate in a, a democratic society, as it were, where we vote our politicians and such in. And so if you don't like what somebody does or says, you have every right to go to the polls and vote otherwise. And you have to pray that there's enough people that think the way you do to make the adjustments that need to be made. But in the end, God knows what's going on. And you know what? This world is focused on running itself and doing its own thing, not following God. Many religions are started and run because uh, someone got sideways with a pastor, left the church and said, I'm right, I'm going to do my own thing. And they head off in their own direction and they put all these rules and regulations on man. They start these religions and they just ruin what God is trying to do instead of somebody getting rid of their pride and humbling themselves and allowing them to be told something that they may not agree with because it is right. If it's Bible, you have no reason to speak against it. Uh, Moses had direct contact with God. God said he would speak directly with Moses, face to face. I'll speak with Moses. Amen. Well, why would you stand up and say that you're holier than Moses is or just as holy as Moses is if you did not have access to God at the time? So pride is welled up in Korah here. And he's saying he's moving some people against him. Proverbs fifteen twelve, continuing on in that pride vein, uh, says, A scorner loveth not one that reproveth him, neither will he go unto the wise. Um, verse 25 of the same chapter, The Lord will destroy the house of the proud, but he will establish the border of the widow. Verse 32 says, He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul, but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. We have opportunity to grow under the leadership that we have been given if we will yield ourselves to those things. Verse, uh, chapter 30, verse 12 of Proverbs, There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. We have men, women who are going about their, their life today thinking that they're right in their own belief. They have no Bible. They have no stance. They have no truth to stand on. And yet they'll tell you how to behave, how to think, how to act, and they don't know what they're doing. But then you have men who will sit in church, and a pastor will get up, and he'll tell them how to think, how to behave, how to act, and they'll talk against it. I don't want to do that. I don't think I should have to do that. I don't think that that's, but if it's Bible, it's the truth. The, uh, the men of Korah didn't believe that Moses was called of God. Jeremiah chapter, chapter 8, Jeremiah chapter 8. It's not good to be standing in opposition of the man of God. So many people find it simple to do and think nothing of it. And in so doing, they're ruining the testimony of the church as well, especially when they want to say, I'm a part of that church, but the pastor is this or the pastor is that. They're not exactly allowing God to have the right testimony in the eyes of those around them especially when we have the hypocrites dealing with things all the time. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 8, How do ye say we are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, certainly in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord, and what wisdom is in them? We go to uh, people, people often say that, they know best, but they don't know the Word of God, and they don't know God. When you can speak personally, directly with the God who created this world, and your wisdom comes from His Word, which He magnified above His name, what other wisdom is there? Yeah. 
So these men suggested that God was not with Moses, and God, it was not God who had brought them up. It was Moses that did it. And uh, they were basically standing in direct uh, opposition to the authority that God put in place. And so he, brings the, he asks them to bring their censers. And the censer is just the symbol of the priesthood because these men had put themselves in that position and they had uh, set up, it says they, their, they had set up their own, uh, <coughs> the tabernacle of, uh, in verse 24, get you up from the tabernacle of Korah, Datham, and Abiram. It sounds to me like they had started their own church, their own religion amongst the children of Israel, and they had started uh, trying to worship God in their own way, not the way that God had asked them to. And in verses 20 and through 22, God gives them a warning. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. And thankfully, Moses and Aaron fell on their faces and said, O oh God, the God of the spirits of flesh, shall one man sin, and when thou be wroth with all the congregation. So it's not always, uh, men, uh, people are easily led. People are easily led by those who will uh, get up and be, be standing in the front. Very few people have that motivation, but these men obviously did, and they saw an opportunity to grab a hold of a lot of people. Now, it doesn't mean that these people necessarily thought that Moses was a bad guy. It just meant that Korah had deceived them in their understanding of what was going on with Moses. Thankfully, Moses and Aaron saw the need to stop and make intercession for the congregation, the people that were easily led astray, and ask God to only deal with the sin and the sinner as opposed to those that were just being led along. Thankfully, we also as Christians have a, an intercessor, the, the man Jesus Christ, our Savior. He intercedes for us on a daily basis, especially when we step out of the way, because let's face it, we're all guilty of something. Possibly even of thinking ill of a leader or a pastor or thinking they're wrong. Maybe even our government. We all can easily succumb to these things. Second Timothy, uh, sorry, 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4 says, I exhort thee. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayer, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all goodness and honesty, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come to unto the knowledge of the truth. Korah may have stepped out of the way, but Moses saw a need to step in between him and God to stop any judgment from coming on people who it should not be coming on. We talk about sin. We, we now face no condemnation of sin. That doesn't mean that we don't have consequences for sin. Yeah. And uh, just like we saw last week, uh, it was not God's desire that the children of Israel spend 40 years in the wilderness. It was their desire that they would go in and that they would be in the land. But because the men that went sinned against God, as it were, and, and said that they had no, no faith, no belief in what was going on, uh, there was some consequences. And all of the men 20 years old and up had to face that consequence. They were going to die in the wilderness. These men here have sinned against God in standing against the authority that God has put in place. And there's going to be consequences. But Moses is trying to save the congregation from re reaping those consequences. So he calls them to separate. And he, he tells us that we ought not to be equally yoked with the world. We ought to separate from the world. Us personally and individually, we should not be uh, caught up with the things of the world or, uh, or enamored by the things of the world. And Moses is trying to 
separate those that are just being pulled along by the, the wave from those that were actually causing or in sin. So he asked them in verse 26 to get away from the, the tent of those that were going to be uh, judged. Psalm 1 1 is familiar to us. It says, uh, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. He wants us to stay away from those things of the world and not to be envious of the things that are going on in the world because of the perils that come with it. There's this judgment that is passed on them. He's talking about uh, how that in verse 28, and Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works, for I have not them done them of mine own mind. It would be a scary thing to be standing there having Moses say, These men will, if they die normally, then God's not with me. But if they die abnormally and the, wor the earth open up and swallow them, then you'll know what's going on. And all of a sudden, people just start disappearing. I think at that point a whole lot of people who were following Korah, Datham, and Abiram would be like, uh, um, yeah, I don't want to stand with those guys anymore. Can we go back to where we were before? And they kind of uh, stepped away from them and all of a sudden they're standing there by themselves. It was, it was an unexpected judgment, right? Certainly not something that you would think is going to happen today. Today we're going to be standing there and all of a sudden tents and life and people are just going to disappear down into the pit. Very unexpected and very sudden. The Bible says that the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. We don't know when he's going to come. We have a, a work to do. We have a, a, a mission our mission is to reach all. God said he's not willing that any would perish, but that all should come to repentance. Our job is to be out there preaching the gospel. How do we preach the gospel out of uh, in this moment and then speak against the pastor in this moment or speak against uh, our authorities in this moment and expect the people that we're talking to to receive anything from it? It's difficult because... We're sinning when we do those things. And we're sinning against God and against the authority that he has put in place. Verse 38, the censors of these sinners against their own souls. So these 250 men had, uh, had a sudden burning as well. Now, I don't know about you. I, I don't generally go to cremations and things, but it generally takes a little bit of time. The fire of the Lord came out and 250 men burnt up like that. Gone. That's an intense fire. And the only thing left was the brazen censers that they had. That's impressive. If the earth swallowing up people didn't get your attention, the fire wiping out 250 more would certainly Amen. bring to light some things. Christ is not going, uh, God is not going to sit by and watch as these men stand against his authority. Now, God has promised that he would save those that uh, that will receive him as his savior he's promised a way out he's promised a way out of the sin that we have in our lives and uh, he has promised also that those who will not accept that will end up in the lake of fire and uh it's not a not a it's not a game. It's not a party. 
I, uh, I saw something the other day on a car, uh, and it just made me sad because they said, I, know I'm, I already know I'm going to hell. It's not about that. It's about go big or go home. And you just think, you have the wrong concept of hell. Hell is fire, eternal fire. And it's not, it's not a show. It's not a game. It's not fun with your friends. <laughs> Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was no found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and whosoever was not found written in the lake of fire was cast. The book of life was cast into the lake of fire. There is no turning back at that point. If there is not a, a name in the book of life, then you will perish, and it will be a permanent thing that is not a party. Thankfully, you have received Christ as your Savior, and you're on your way to heaven. You don't have to worry about that. What we have to worry about is standing in opposition to God's authority and doing the things that, uh, saying things against the men that he has put in place. So we have these men who are burnt up. We have these uh, Korah who's swallowed up, Korah and his company. And then in verse uh, 41, the next day, the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron, saying, you killed all the people of the Lord. Hello, were you not paying attention? Moses just stood before you and said, if these guys die a normal death, it's not me. God is not with me. If something else happens to them and they go down, then God's the one who sent me. So who's God's people? Who's the people of the Lord? Moses. He proved that. But yet they come out again and they start murmuring again against Moses and Aaron. And you kind of have to wonder about when they're going to wake up to reality. It's very similar to today, right? I mean, you get people in the street who uh, just don't deal with reality. They think, well, I'm right. I'm good. I had a guy tell me he hadn't sinned in 25 years. I'm glad you're keeping track, but what about before that? Oh, well, I didn't know then, so it doesn't matter. They're just not, not, not thinking clearly. You have killed the people of the Lord, and so God sends a plague. Again, Moses and Aaron have to step in on behalf of the congregation. It's a good thing Moses and Aaron are following God and doing what God wants them to do. Now, God wants Moses to step aside so he can just shoot through the middle and finish it, right? But Moses has reminded him that what will the, what will the nations of the world think? That you couldn't handle these people? You couldn't put up with the, the troubles and the situations? And really... A lot of times, pastors these days, they do get run down, they get worn out, and by rights, because men just don't treat them with the respect that they're supposed to treat them with. God put them there. You didn't. They answer to God, not to you. They're doing the best that they can. Amen. And if they aren't, let God deal with it. He's much, he's much more capable of dealing with it than you and I are. So the congregation starts murmuring again, and uh, Moses has to send out Aaron once again to stand in between. Now, that has to be a sight as well, because Moses says, take a censer, put incense thereon from the, from the altar, and run out to there and stop the plague. I mean, most of us see a plague, and we know that people die fairly quickly. But it would seem that these people are literally just dropping dead. And he's running in between the dead and the living. 
to offer atonement for their murmuring. And 14,700 people died from the plague that day. It's a lot of people. Doesn't give us a number for Korah and his company, but all of his household, all of his tents, all of his things disappeared. 250 men died by fire like that. And 14,700 people died from a plague. And Moses and Aaron continued to do their job and stand for the people. We have men who are put in authority over us and we ought to honor them. We ought to give them their due. We ought not to be speaking ill of them no matter what they've done. Maybe they have done something foolish and silly but we ought to be careful about the judgment that we pass. And you get that on the street a lot. All oh, judge not lest you be judged. Well, it has some context to it that they just don't want to bring into to the light at the time. And uh, we ought to be careful about it. If you understand it, God gave us that intercession on our behalf. He stands as our, our head, especially as we uh, go forward. Christ is the head of the church, but he has put an under-shepherd in place to help lead. And those churches that kind of get sideways or different and want to, these elder-run churches that are, well, no one's really the authority because God is the authority of this church. But God put men in authority. He put Moses in authority on purpose. Why? Because there needed to be somebody that would stand in between. Because God was willing to wipe them out. Moses like, no, nah, don't do that. And then when Moses gets worn out and he says, God, just wipe them out, God says, eh, I'll need you there. So be careful about how you speak of authority. Thankfully, God does not open up the earth and swallow us up. But how many of us would be guilty of speaking against our authority? Whether church or work or political, we really should be mindful of it and go forward as God would have us to go forward, honoring those that he has put in authority and giving them their place. Proverbs 28, 26. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. We've been given instruction. We've been given uh, the way to go. Let's not follow after Korah. Let's not allow that sin in our life, and let's do what God wants us to do by honoring those that he's put in authority over us. That will be our memory verse for this week, Proverbs 28, 26, and we'll close there. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the lessons that we learn. And though pride and unbelief and arrogancy come into play in our lives, Lord, we ask that we would not be led away from those things and into sin, Help us to make the right choices. Help us not to follow our own heart, but help us to follow what you have given us to follow in wisdom through the scriptures, through the truth of the word of God. Bless the, the rest of the day as we uh, have the main service that you would just have your will and way in our hearts. In Jesus' name.